Names on Twitch, I swear I slaughter so many of them. All right. Assuming we still have 10 right, it's just climb heading 103 to 540, then direct river, then on to depicted route to Whammy. Okay. And Portland departure. Uh, oh, I love these uh, Portland departure frequencies based on radial. So I'm assuming we're going to get 18.1. No, I could be wrong. Hold on. 9.4. So will we get, no, we'll get 1, 2, 4, 3, 5, I think. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, my oh. sim just crashed. Come on, me. Come on, man. Did you, and that's a freshy sim? Yeah, but my planes, my, I was trying to do a 753, but I think the 753 is a bit borky. Gonna try the two or I might just fly the bus again. It's such an easy plane. Uh block fuel, any ideas in pounds? <laughs> uh fifteen thousand to be conserved. Okay. Good dispatching. I wish dispatchers were like that in the real world. Eh. Let's give or take. Ooh, we can take a look at this livery for the first time. Look at this, boys. Hey, nice. Wow. That's a good looking livery. Is that a college? Probably is a college, huh? I'm not up to school on my Florid Floridian mascots. Yeah. Yep. What'd you say? It is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I was thinking the Seminoles, but that's, I guess that's Florida State, maybe? So, John, what, do the, what do you think of the Zebo Mini? I, I, I like the Zebo Mini. Uh, flight altitude max, do you think? 35 okay 33 i'm okay with okay. 35 what do you want you're let's in the 30, bus uh, 33 let's go 33 33, 33 it is uh yeah no i like the i like the mini do you think uh does this have a different shared cockpit configuration file uh i think it will use the same one as the 800 i think mostly it's just a visual difference okay. it might work we should maybe. try it huh yeah, let's give it a shot. All right, I've got cruise winds two three five at two one. Yep. And I've got a outside air temperature at thirty. Actually, I better change my flight level here. Okay. I can't remember who in chat was asking, but somebody was asking about a car quality or a car uploads all of this stuff for us minus 44 we got a subscribe we have a subscribe so we got aqua funkalistic booty wap uh puff mtd gifting a tier one sub to aqua funkalistic booty wap thank you puff mtd for gifting the aqua funk and uh don't be surprised if he doesn't give you a booty wap as a thank you i'm saying minus 44 outside air temperature Plus 18, no D-rate, takeoff, laps 5. I don't know what a booty wap is, but it sounds interesting. 116, 117, 132. And 3 bush covers code 3. Yaw damper coming on.
Clarence one two zero one two five. Sounds interesting, yeah. It involves locker rooms and rolled up towels. Ouch. Do you see, do, have you s seen any other liveries f for that plane you're flying? I have not, no. Are there others? What's Eastern's ICAO code? Actually, you know what? I have no idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a uh, global. Just so you guys can see global on the um, on the Pilot Edge uh, flight board, the, the the GSA logo is really juicy, and we're co-chairing today with the Florida Panthers. But I have no idea what Eastern is. Nightmare Frame would know what Eastern is. Okay, we're going to 30, 33,000. Whammy. Four. I am B H L E. John, you want to run through a uh, captain's pre-flight flow? Uh, yeah, once I get cl pull my clearance, because I don't have fancy dancy A cars. Is that okay? It's your plane, man. Rock band two ninety seven, go to the Haley Friedman Airport, Wami for departure, Kimberly transition, then as filed. Main Dane seven thousand, departure frequency one one eight point four two, squawk three six four seven. All right, Rock Band 297 is equipped to a Friedman uh, Whammy 4, Kimberly is file 7 now, 1842's departure, score 3647. Rock Band 297, read that, correct? So IMB is Kimberly? Yep, yep, exactly. Oh, there's a couple other people here at Portland right now. Nice. Portland Clarence, Global 572 IFR, uh, Friedman Valley. Haley Friedman. Global 572, Portland Clarence, cleared to the Haley Airport, Wami for departure, Kimberly transition, then as filed. May Dane 7000, departure frequency 118.42, squawk 2437. Squawk 2437, Global 572. Global 572, read that, correct? All right. I always truncate when someone's just read back the same. <laughs> Whammy 4. IMB. Delta 2752, Grand X, San Francisco, Terra 120.5. Would you choose the runway first or the transition first? Uh, the departure first, normally how I do it. I am B, 10 right. Pretty simple route. It's super easy, right? Are you putting it in an approach or just leaving it blank for now? I'm leaving it blank for now. Normally, they'll get you on the RNAV X-ray, whatever it is, or RNAV, what's it called? Yeah, RNAV X-ray, but I'm just going to, I guess, wait for now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, captain's pre-flight. Jump seater. Chuck. 
Yeah, give me a second. I'm just I'm swapping around between Discord and uh, and the stream. Or All right, I'll go ahead with Twitch. it. Here we go. I'm ready. Oh, go ahead. All right. So starting is this a pre-flight or is this this not? I haven't done flight? much other than connected the GPU and turned on the fuel pump, and that's all I've done really. And and okay. line the IRS. Okay, you got ground power on. Ground power's on. So the battery's on. So you want to close the uh, exit lights. Arm those. Exit lights armed. Delta 2752, San Francisco Tower, Wind 506, runway 25. Other things see. This is stuff the FO is going to do. FO's. Clear to land, uh, Engine bleeds are off, the engine air conditioning. And then the FO is going to do all the stuff you just did. As the captain, you're going to get on. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the logbook, see if there's any maintenance discrepancies. Okay. Make sure that they match what the flight plan has that the dispatcher has the same discrepancies on the plane or not uh if there's if it's on an mel you're going to get into read any special procedures you're going to talk with the fo make sure you guys both understand what needs to be done for those of you who don't know mel is a minimum equipment list uh there are so many backups in a 737 uh you could have a fuel pump that's bad uh, you could have a, an APU that's bad, and you're still allowed to fly with it. However, if you fly with the system that's inoperative, sometimes there's special procedures. So you just got to make sure that you're in compliance with that. After that's done, you're going to check your oxygen. And then you're going to go up and you're going to check the emergency escape rope. So on the oxygen, basically all you do in the oxygen test button on the upper left. I'm also going to turn on the overhead speaker. I'm going to select the uh, flight inner phone. And as I press the uh, that button, I'm going to actually broadcast with my mic switch. And I want to make sure I can hear that the microphone in that mask is broadcasting through the speaker. It's listening for a rush of air on the overhead speaker. I think I'm going to do it this time, John. So I'm going to come up, look on the aft overhead panel at the crew oxygen pressure. Crew oxygen pressure, OK. It's on the aft overhead panel. Yeah, you're you on delay, sure. so just to to the alpha to the yeah, state. be patient. Yeah, I get alpha it. To the river, man, you're free you want to make sure it's at least 600 pounds. Um, if it's less than 600 pounds, we're limited to how many people we can have in the cockpit. So there's one or two extra jump seats up there. If I'm less than 600 pounds, I probably can't have a jump seater up there. Uh, if I'm more than 1,000 pounds, I'm good all day. So in this case, we have 1,200 pounds. We're in great shape there. Now, technically, if you had an open seat in the back... But you were under Grand oxygen Tower, level. Couldn't that person just leave the cabin? You don't want to open the door for security oh, okay. issues. Okay. So, by the way, this it's oxygen it's system is totally separate than what the Number passengers are using. Okay. Okay. So this is just the four up front. The flight attendants don't have access to oxygen. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to scroll over and. Has there ever been any discussion about putting something into the passengers? oxygen system to, to to incapacitate everyone in the event of an incident <laughs> i've always thought about that there has been talk if you have like a hijack yeah i was like point. get the captains get the pilots on oxygen if there's a, a big huge rumble in the back with whatever going on just shh, little spray boom everyone's knocked out for 30 minutes <laughs> i mean if you really want but to, then you, you accidentally do it plane. And it's like, oh, all heck breaks loose. Depressurize the plane. The back oxygen only lasts about 11 minutes. So yeah. keep it up at altitude. Put mm -hmm. everybody to sleep back anyway, there. Anyway, I digress. Go ahead. I would never do that, of course. Next, yeah. we're going to check the leading edge devices. Press the test uh, button. And we're looking for all those lights to come on. Looks good. Okay, next I'm going to come over and I'm going to check that both EECs uh, say on. They don't say alternate. Yep, on. Go ahead. Next I'm going to come over to the flight recorder. I'm going to open the guard. I'm going to throw the switch to test and I'm looking for the off light to go off. Yep. Is the flight Close recorder the off in that situation? No. So when's the flight recorder case, on? Uh, flight recorder is on is as oil pressure gets up to a set level so it basically and so you can have all your private conversations before the oil pressure is to a certain degree. don't quote me on that i'm not 100 percent on that. i gotta look <laughs> that one up okay next we're going to test both of the mock uh, airspeed warning tests 
So we're going to press the button. Okay, uh, number next. one, listen for it to click. Number two, listen for it to click. Uh, stall warning test number one and two, we're going to test those. I am a two, I mean, nothing like in the airplane. In the airplane, you have to push the button, hold it for a second, release it, and then it takes about three or four seconds for the uh, the test to actually kick off. It's always fun when I get Twitch streamers in the real jet and have them do this because they all freak out because it doesn't behave at all. Mm. Like the real thing. So in the real jet, you got to push it. Hold it for a second, release it, and then it's three to four seconds before the stick shaker goes. Mm. Uh, let's see, next we're going to scroll down to. Shelly. Let's go to the flight control panel. Shelly, Cat Gaming, good day. Flight control panel. You mean the MCP or? No, no, no. Just uh, We're still in the overhead panel. We're going to oh. go through. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to go on the flight controls, checking everything there is uh, in the normal position. So right now, that's good. We've got fuel in the main tanks. So now I'm going to come down to the fueling panel tank that has fuel in it. I'm going to turn on those fuel pumps. So in this case, we're going to turn on all the main tank pumps. Okay, they're on. And I'm looking for the lights to go out. Okay. Uh, the sim's not going to do this, but on electric panel at this point, I'm going to go to TR1, TR2, TR3, and I'm going to make sure that it's got a frequency and an, a volts and an amps on each one. Uh, on the sim, it, it gives zero volts, but in the plane, I'm actually looking for voltage on each one, so the sim doesn't really model that. Okay. Next, I come down to the passenger signs. I turn the passenger signs on. Okay. Next, we're going to go up to the uh, window heat. We're going to turn all those on. We're looking for all. Oh, snack. Got a dono. And again, we talked earlier if the green lights don't come on, you can take it to power test. Hey, John, I have a question. Why can't you start the 737's engines with the packs on? Uh, question is, why can't you start the 737 with packs on? It asks Mac with a $5 dono. Thank you. You can. Sometimes it will, but it's, it's taking too much bleed air. And you're going to find your, your big indication that you've got a pack on is you're looking for the end uh, RPM to get up to 25% before you throw fuel to it. With the pack on, it only gets up to about 10 or 12 it's just taking too much air off the pack, and you, the engine just doesn't speed up enough. What about one pack? Same thing. Just that engine that the pack's mm. on. So if you if you got the right pack on, uh, this happens occasionally. Yeah, that's your first indication. It's just not spooling up. First thing you look up, it's like, oh, crap, I left the pack on. Mm. It happens occasionally. Uh, next, we're going to go to the probe heat. Going to turn them on. Do we turn them on at the, the lights? What was the question? Do we turn the probe heat on at the gate? No. We're going to test them. Okay. So, so are they going to go on? Look for on. all the lights to go off. We're going to turn them back off again. Okay. Lights go off. Cool. Okay. Next, we're going to go uh, hydraulic pumps. It's uh, you A pumps. You don't do this in the sim, but I'm going to turn on the trim air. Okay. Uh, hydraulics again. Sorry. Go ahead. A pumps off. B pumps off. Okay. A's off. B's on. I'm sorry. A's the reason on. you want the A-pumps on yep. is that's what powers the nose wheel steering. Yep. Let's see, it's A's off, B's on. There we go. Um, you don't want the A-pumps on because that's what powers the nose wheel steering. There is a cutout pin that Ground Ops uses that cuts out, but as a safety backup, if you were to have the A-pumps on uh, during a pushback and you put any kind of nose wheel steering on it, or if, that's, if the steering chiller is off at all, it's going to snap a, a tow bar and has the potential to seriously injure or kill uh, a ramp agent. Okay. Don't want to do that? Uh, doesn't work in the sim. Next, we're going to test the voice recorder. You press the test button, look for the test light to come on, and it goes off again. Next, I come down to my uh, mode control panel, and I'm going to set it up. All right. By the way, the things we're walking through, this takes about uh, four minutes. 
in real life. Flight director on, maybe? No. Yeah, flight director, whoever's leg it is. Okay. Uh, if it's CFO's leg, he'll have the flight director okay. first. All right. Then you turn yours on second. That way he gets the master light. The master light um, is telling whose flight director is going to the autopilot system. Okay. Uh, Ethos panel, big things you said here. We're not going to do it, but uh, we're going to set on the barrow mins. I'm going to set 1,000 feet above the takeoff altitude. And on radio mins, I'm going to set to 200. Okay. And what that does is 1,000 feet above the takeoff altitude, it's going to draw an artificial green line 1,000 feet above the takeoff on your altimeter tape there. Mm. And what that does is that's telling you that's your min cleanup altitude. So you're going to take off, leave your flaps there until you get to that green line. The other thing that green line does is it's also telling the auto throttles when it's going to go from takeoff rated thrust and reduce your thrust to climb really, uh, climb thrust. Takeoff thrust is usually higher than your climb thrust. All right, so where do we go next? Uh, next check. I don't know what you call it, but just below your EFIS panel, you've got the, the three lights. We're going to test those lights. See, I guess a better way to slide. See your, your, the your light test switch. for the AP. No, see, bingo, that's it. Yeah. So we take the, the enunciators to test. Next, I do a lights test on every light on the plane. And then all these little lights have two light bulbs in it. So if, if one's burned out, you'll tell immediately because half the display is going to be uh, dark. Yep. I think you got to see that when you got to get in the plane. Yeah. Yep. Bulb. You want to show where the spare bulbs are kept? Uh, Do you remember? They're right back up here. Spare bulbs right there. Yep. So we got a whole Little rack pouch. of spare light bulbs. That's where they keep their contraband as well. All right, next thing I'm going to do is going to come over and I'm going to reset the fuel. So just to the left of where you set the auto brakes, there's a fuel used in a fuel reset button. I'm going to take that to reset. Okay. And zero out the previous flight. I'm going to take the auto brakes to RTO. Set. Looking for the light to come on and go off. That looks good. Uh, next, I'm going to come down, and I'm going to check my set. You broke up what? Make sure the parking brake is set. I'm back. Parking brake set. Next, Welcome I'm back, take each. We're doing a slow I'm roll. I'm going to take each throttle one at a time, and I'm going to push the throttle up to about 70%. I'm listening for a takeoff one. I'm going to pull it back to idle. Got I'll the take the right throttle warning. do the exact same thing. Okay. Mine are bound together, so I got the warning. Next, I'm going to do a fire test. We'll skip the fire test for today. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, we're pretty much done. Okay. At this point, I'm going to do a fire test on the main fire panel. I'm going to do a fire test on the cargo panel, and then I'm going to do a test on my rudder radar. And I'm going to check that the trim, aileron and rudder trim, is centered. That's the captain's brief flight flow. Okay. In real life, it takes about uh, three to four minutes to do the whole thing. Okay. Very cool. All right, I'm going to start the APU. We'll just get going. That was a good introduction to the captain's flow. I like and it. one thing, when you do the flow, you're used to the flow. If I get in halfway through the flow, I I have to start over again. It's just you get so used with muscle memory and how to do this. Mm. All right, anyone else want to get in the drawing? Make sure you do so. We're going to draw that during the, when I'm lined up on the runway. Looks like there's 15 people in on the drawing so far. All right, APU is stabilizing. How do you enter? Uh, exclamation... Uh, Ticket? Is it ticket or tickets? It's exclamation ticket space and then the number of tickets you want to purchase based on your snack balance. 
You can check your snack balance by typing in exclamation uh, ticket, or sorry, snack, S-N-A-K. All right, uh, I gotta check one more thing here. What's the top altitude on the whammy? He cleared me to seven. Thank you. Did he not give you anything? He did. I just, I didn't, I didn't recall. Okay. I wrote, I wrote down M.7 and I thought that was nice. like a new type of hard drive. Hey, John, can I ask you a question real quick? Uh -huh. Can you select A cars on your... Uh... There's nothing modeled. Okay, I was just curious what it said, because there was a question in chat about it. I don't know what that picture was that he sent over, but... Yeah, it was not A cars. It was just a, it was a menu. It was an FMC menu. All right, I'm going to type in exclamation ATIS KPDX information whiskey, maybe? No, it's Lima still <laughs> all right Lima and we're gonna push I'm gonna disconnect the GPU make sure that I'm on APU gens I've had that problem so many times and any collision light coming on is that all you have on is for push is any collision? Or do you have something else on? Route a cockpit. Please show me where you want to go. Anti collision and uh, position lights. Or Route navigation cockpit. lights. Urban two right right kilo traffic at 9 o'clock in 3.5 miles southeastbound via far to gauge 13000. Did I just hear that? There's another rock band on frequency? Really? Two Romeo Kilo, affirmative. Two Romeo Kilo, or did I hear that incorrectly? Maybe I'm just hearing rock band all the time now. Loving hearing the rock bands <laughs> in, the, in the eardrum. All right, I'm, my tug's coming up. I'll be pushing in just a few moments. Cool. Is this a active... Oh, I, need, I think I, I'm going to request permission to push onto ta Tango, I think. What do you guys think? If you look at that chart, Max, do you think I should? I'm at the gate. I'm just off of Tango. Yeah, I got a, I got a crazy taxi. You have a short taxi. Did you? Are you going to ten right still? Yeah. Okay. okay. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Ground Rock Band 297 VIP hangers at flight line taxi with Lima. Rock Band 297 Portland Ground Runway 10 left at. Echo, taxi. John, just to let you know, echo. you've got a, a hold special on, engine on, hold on, hold on. procedure. Hold on. All right, Alpha Echo, one zero left at Echo Rock Band, you know. All right, I just, I, I want to hear the ATC come back to him, just to hear what's going on. Go ahead. You have a special engine out procedure on this runway. Um, if you lose an engine on this runway, you're not going to clear the obstacles with with an engine out. So you, there's a special there's procedure. So basically, if you lose an engine... Three, four, do you yeah, off of PDX and make a left turn back over the river? Ooh. So I should simulate that one day. All, all the mountains. I should simulate that one day for sure. You can do like Nico does and just fail both engines and turn around. <laughs> all right, let me pull a, a, a clearance to push here. Hold on. KJG 2015 is enjoying this off skip descent, so thank you. Uh, okay. Is someone checking in? Portland ground, global 572. We're at uh, the terminal requesting pushback onto Tango. Global 572, Portland ground, push onto Tango approved. Push onto Tango approved, global 572. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Okay, we're gonna start Atlanta engines. Ground, King Air 1399, Atlantic with Yankee rated taxi. Number so one three eight nine center off the ground runway three three taxi via alpha. Runway three three via alpha one three nine nine. 
also no Leisman's enjoying it as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a special treat to have Oxcad Descent here. And uh, as always, it's PE flights are 70,000% better when I'm flying with Citation Max. <laughs> Tango Delta, to the Max aboard Yellowstone. We have good departure. group flights. They're fun. Medicine and you don't make fun of me as the much. Ever. So good. Yeah. You're supportive. You're like, ah, it's okay. You screwed up. You're fine, John. You're fine. You give me support. Emotional support. Uh, medicine bow transition and so you're like my Val Dudes 420. Uh, Number four, Tango Delta, read back. All right. Correct. Let's do Christopher. ground. Hello. Is that Christopher? That's Heli Pilot. Ah. Uh, is he in the TBM again? Yep. One thing you do see a lot of streamers uh, is think the engine out as much. They, they, yeah, they don't think about engine out as much as yeah, for sure. We don't, we don't really do. We don't simulate that very often. Nico does quite a bit though, which is impressive. Can I get four captain stripes in front of my Twitch name? Sure, you got it. You just have to um, use the invisible ink. All right, set in the parking brake. Disconnecting tow, stand by. All right, I need to set my altitude. Uh, landing altitude at Friedman, Haley, is? Uh, it is 53. 53 wow. Holy cow, that's a mile high. Hydraulics A is coming on. Tow is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the right. We'll see you next time and have a great flight. Pro P coming on. Flaps. And Portland Ground Global 572, gate Charlie 15, taxi with Lima. Global 572, runway 10 left at Tango, taxi via Tango. One left at Tango, taxi via Tango. Global 572. I'm going to the left as well. Daniel Ground, TBM 734, Tango Delta, signature nice. with Delta, rated taxi. Tango, Tango. Oh, wait, am I doing inter intersection? Number 734, Tango Delta, runway 17, yep. left oh. at Alpha 4, taxi via Alpha 4. 17 left at Alpha 4 via Alpha, Alpha 4, TBM 4, Tango Delta. <clears throat> Alpha. Yes, Brace for Impact, he has flown the max. I'm answering for him. There he goes. Aquaman 297, Portland Tower, wind 2803, running 10 left at Echo, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 10 left at Echo, Rock Band 297. We're just not getting any eye candy from Max. Might get to see him on the takeoff roll here. Yeah. I was trying to wait too, but he called me. That's okay. I can see you now, little little Max Eye Candy. Yep. You're in a United Paint on here. Last time you were in a an older United Paint. Now you're in the newer one. Interesting. Huh. 
Aspen Tower, King See Air, ya. 139, Niner, holding short, runway 33. Number 139, Niner, Aspen Tower, runway 33, clear for takeoff. Runway 33, clear for takeoff, 139, Niner. Wind check 24010, gust 24. Roger, 1399, thanks. Is it 18.7 for tower? Yep, 18.7, yep. Global 572, Portland Tower, wind 280 at three, runway 10 left to tango, clear for takeoff. 10 left, clear for takeoff, Global 572. Rockland 297, departure. This is where I have to do everything quick. Standing with our TB TBM 734, Tang at Alta, short 17 left at Alpha 4, ready for departure. Rockman 297, departure out of contact, climb and maintain 15,000. I'm on PE, baby. It, he keeps moving it quick here, doesn't mess around. Yeah, yeah. Remember, seven, three, like four, the real world. Adult, uh, Send Daniel Tower fly, runway heading, runway 17 left at Delta 4, clear for takeoff, wind 0405. Clear for takeoff, uh, 17 left, fly runway heading, TPM 4, take it off. Not staying on the Eight center points. line, it's okay. D1, D1, rotate. Okay, positive rate gear coming up. Remember two, Romeo, good luck on that girl approach, 127.4. Remember two, five, two, One Romeo, thousand. Kilo, and Oracle approach, Roger, the executive altimeter, two, nine, or eight, six. Quickly. Over three, nine, 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 departure. Over two, departure, King Air, one, three, nine, nine, two. Global five, seventy two, connect departure. Over to departure, global five, seventy two. Let that guy check in first. Departure King Air 1399, Lens 9, 100,000 for our climate via the city. Rubber 1399, our aspect departure, right of contact, call the main team for level 200. Climb maintain for level 200, King Air 1399. Rock Band 297, connect to Seattle Center 121.4. 214, Rock Band 297. Portland departure, Global 572, 5700, climbing 7000. Global 572, on departure, out of contact, call the main name, 15,000. Call maintain 15, 15,000, Global 572. Report Tango Delta, connect for departure. Rock Climb 297, call center, call the main name, level 230. Climbing 8, heading 170. Remember 734, Tango Delta, Denver departure, out of contact, turn left, heading 090. Left, heading 090. He's busy now. He's working. Yeah, baby. You can feel the sweat dripping off his forehead. Holy 6,200 feet per minute. <laughs> yeah, you're climbing like a homesick angel as Misty Gibbs. Uh-huh. Oops. You won't see that climb rate for real on a 7.3. Oh, really? 5,400 now. What's what's the most you normally see if you're relatively light? Does 85, 68, San Francisco, clear, so request, stand by. 3,000 feet per minute. My position lights are on strobe and steady. Are they, are not, are they not supposed to be on strobe and steady? Global 572, connect Seattle Center 121.4. Oh. Uh, again, Global 572. 121.4, No, they stay on strobe and steady. 21.4, thank you, Global 572. 
They'll stand a strobe and steady until you land. Is four a center? 21 four? Yeah, it's Seattle Center. Okay, let's go. Seattle Center, Global 572, 14 5 for 15,000. Global 572, Seattle Center, call and maintain for level 230. Call and maintain 230, Global 572. Sorry, I keep repeating myself. I've listened to this on both Discord and Twitch. Yeah, I turned the stream off. But then you can't hear power damage. <laughs> That's where you gotta get that arrow nav map. That arrow nav map is kinda cool. I'm still gonna talk over pilot edge because there's such a delay. Not on arrow nav map, there won't be. Jazz 5568. Jazz 5568, clear to the Calgary Airport. Track into departure. That head transition that has filed. Climb via sit. Except maintain 10,000. Don't you have an iPad? Clock 6746. Yeah, I got an iPad. Yeah, the IRL nav map. Well, I'm going to hook you up with that. It's going to be awesome. It's free. <laughs> I'm going to hook you up with that. It's free. <laughs> yeah, Wait. if you want to jump here in the future, I'll do it that way. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Jazz 85, six, read that correct? And if, for folks who have questions, just ask in chat. What, once we get in cruise, uh, please voice it though, so I can hear it as well. I don't, I can't read chat all the time. If you don't mind. Two, Roman Kilo, you can make your request with Roger. the next controller. Confirm. Global Hello. 572, Hold on. Center, 135.15. 3515, Global 572. Seattle Center, Global 572, flight level 220 for 230. Go. Global 572, Seattle Center, climb maintain flight level 330. Climb maintain 330, Global 572. Number 3, 999, Denver Center, 134.5. Uh, Max, I like the Whammy 4. <laughs> it's a cool one, isn't it? And the Whammy 4 likes me. <laughs> <laughs> the Timbers 2 is not... I, I, it doesn't like me today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> isn't that funny how... Well, it, actually, you're pretty... You're pretty... Uh, Insulated. You don't get too upset when you make a, a boo boo on the on the network. No, cause especially with the planes doing. you're flying. Well, I fly planes that no one ever flies, and they're pretty much you yeah. know yeah. first time. You know, Denver, you know what I mean. Center. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Center, if I'm making mistakes in the Tolis or the 320, then I'm I'm going to be upset with myself. If I'm making mistakes in the Concord, you know what? I don't know what I don't know what am I supposed to do? I don't know about it. Would you just normally taxi with just one engine, and what engine would you use for it? That's a great question. You can answer that here, Chuck. I may cut you off if I need to talk to PE, but Number four, Tango Delta, connect Denver if you don't Center, mind. One, three, three point six seven. All right, don't get me started on single engine taxi. Um, the company wants us to single engine. Denver Center, TV seven three four, Tango Delta, flight level uh, Both engines running. Uh, APU off, you're burning 28 pounds a minute. That's every four minutes, you're burning 100 pounds. That's that's a lot of gas. That's a lot of money. We try to single engine taxi. Uh, a lot of times, you're too heavy for it. The FO always gives you a hard time when you sit there and brief. Hey, we're in a single engine taxi, so push the power up. You got to be careful with the power. 35%. Um, if you're in a parking gate area, is about the max you want to. Uh, put on the power setting. You get up above that, you're going to start blowing equipment over, you're going to start blowing people over. So the power settings we use is in a congested uh, taxiway or a gate area, it's 35%, it's so the max uh, thrust you can do. On a congested taxiway, or if you got a plane behind you, 40%, on an uncongested or nobody behind you, 45% is the max. So I guess to answer your question is, I look at stuff, I look at the airplane weight, I look at what's behind me. At, at some places like in San Francisco, by gates all around you, I'll always uh, dual engine taxi out of there just because I don't want to go to real high power settings. 
with all that stuff behind me. Places like Denver, places like Fort Lauderdale, where I know I'm going to be taxing for 15 minutes, I'm definitely going to single engine taxi on that if I can if I can do it. So I look at if I'm going to be airborne within about five minutes, I'm not going to single engine. If it's going to be longer than a 10 minute taxi or Atlanta, where I know I'm going to sit and wait for 20 minutes, um, I'll single engine taxi in that case if at all possible. If I can't, We'll taxi out on two engines, and if the delay is going to be more than 10 minutes, up the APU and shut one down. If it's going to be more than a 20-minute delay, we'll shut both engines down and wait. But, but what airports do you think, on average, you, you're airborne within five minutes of taxiing out? I mean, that's like super Baltimore. rare. You, Baltimore, really? Uh-huh. Um, Albany. Uh-huh. I slip. I may run the risk of saying who I am. Um, Janet flies to all of them. So, if I let it slip, and a lot of you guys know who I'm, uh, these views are strictly my local. Center can't speak. Two five two Romeo Kilo, level one three thousand. Mount Hood, uh, that's most amazing. airports. Max, most airports. Right um, and Hobo you're, you're usually out within ten minutes. If you're able. Yeah, the LAX. ten minutes is surprisingly LAX for as busy of an airport that is. Well, you're, you're, Kilo, you're so close to the runway. Great at moving planes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Places like Charlotte, I will always single engine taxi because Charlotte is going to take me. 40 minutes to get out of there. Okay, 99, 99, 99. Or yeah, Fort I'm Lauderdale. Not comment why. Lauderdale takes a while. Lauderdale's just busy, and they got a runway shut down now, so that really gunks up the works. I hope I answered your question. Perfect. Uh, we're supposed to single engine taxi as max as, as much as possible. Considerations I take is aircraft weight. You know, if I'm doing a long haul flight from, say, East Coast to West Coast, full boat of people, there's no way I'm going to single engine taxi that. The exception is a max. Beauty of the max is. The Max has so much power on those engines, you can pretty much always single engine taxi. The other nice thing about the Max is to start taxi, you do not have to release the brake. I mean, all you have to do is release the brakes. Uh, that's excellent information. Thank you, Offscale Descent. Um, uh, R. Lambert says, very interesting to find out so much information. This is an epic stream. Great knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, R. Lambert. And uh, someone else said... Uh, it's, uh, yeah, the worst tanker ever said, this is so cool having a real captain in the stream. I 100% agree with you. San, uh, Jay Snap says San Jose is pretty easy taxi. Makes sense. How, how's Salt Lake City, relatively? Salt Lake City is tough because you can never tell what runway they're going to have you to. Wow, I thought so, they'd I mean, always you... depart you from the east side of the airport. Nope, clearance always says expect this runway AT. Mm. And 50% of the time, ATC changes it. Mm. And then do you have, uh, is there's a, there's a ramp frequency there, right? It depends. Half the gates we use have, you have to talk to ramp, the other half you don't. So oh, okay. if you're parking in a gate that's facing the center runway, with, I, don't, I don't have the diagram in front Janet. of me. Yep. With Janet. Yep. So if you're in the B terminal facing the runway, the center runway, those gates, you don't have to talk to ramp, but if you go on ones that are facing the, you have to talk to ramp there. Mm. What's the worst airport for taxiing? Long Beach? Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte. Hands down. Guys, don't you. Toronto's no, bad. 